What's up guys, I'm one Andrew here and welcome to my top 10. It's finally arrived. It's finally here. I'm so happy. Yes, my top 10 has finally arrived. And to kick things off, it will be the top 10 Steam games. For this list, I will include games that are on but not limited to Steam and Steam. Top 10 Steam games. And with that in mind, we'll start off with number 10. Because that's how top 10s work. Number 10. At number 10, I have One Finger Death Punch. Did you ever play those crappy Flash games as a kid that always had stick figures in them? Well, the first time I played this game, I was afraid that it was one of those games. Thankfully, it wasn't. Having only to use the mouse for controls, this game lets you take on the role of a ninja who must travel across the land and destroy hordes of enemies. And why I say hordes, I mean hordes. It's a basic concept, but at the same time, it's a really flippin' awesome one. I feel like a badass every time I finish a level, knowing that I just widowed hundreds of women killing their husbands for no reason at all except to get a high score and a couple of gold medals. When I first found this game, it was on sale for Steam during the Steam Summer Sale, so I'm sure that it will be on sale again. I think it only costs a couple of dollars, so if you ever see it on sale, I'd highly recommend it. Number 9. Oh Japan, how I love you. But oh Japan, how weird you are. For number 9, I have Mitsurugi Kamui Hikae. I hope I did not butcher that name. Well, aside from butchering it, this game is an arena style type of game. And by that I mean it sticks you in an arena and you fight hordes of enemies. It's kind of like the last game now that I think about it. And the best thing about this game, you're a high school girl. So, you know, it's pretty much the best game ever. At least that's what I think you have to do. It's a really long game and I haven't beat it yet. I don't know. It's been like 10 hours since I haven't beat it. But I do know that it's really flippin' awesome. I mean, who wouldn't want to take on waves of creepy guys in there just to track down your rival and retrieve the Sword of Souls? Nobody. That's who. Number 8 Sweeping in at number 8 is South Park, The Stick of Truth. Now when I first saw this game at E3 of 2012, I thought, wow, that game looks really awesome. And then I saw it at E3 of 2013 and I thought, wow, that game is really awesome. And then, Christmas of 2013, I was thinking, wow, this game's going to be really awesome. But then the developers delayed it because THQ got bought out and I thought, wow, this is awesome. Still, because the game looked awesome. And finally, in spring 2014, we got South Park, The Stick of Truth, and it was really awesome. First off, this game is not, I repeat, not for kids. It was so bad that they censored out complete scenes of it in Australia. Does it mean it's a bad game? Hell no. Doing with the South Park game on the N64 couldn't, the Stick of Truth looks, and more importantly, feels like the show. There are times I would rush through the game just to get to another cutscene so I could watch it like it was a show or movie. Though many people were upset that the gameplay only lasted about 8 hours, I didn't mind the shortness. It isn't exactly what I would call an RPG, and it had very small elements of RPG-ness into it. The town was pretty small to explore, and the weapons customization was pretty lackluster. Doesn't mean it's a bad game, just means it's a bad RPG. I feel like the game was made for the fans, and that's what it had, fan service, all over. The only thing I didn't like about this game was that Kenny died. Those bastards. 
Princess Kinney, how badly did they rape you? <laughs> I can't get through. The door appears to be enchanted, so I can't turn the knob. You can't hold the doorknob, Bard. That's cheating. Yeah, I can. I have the stick of truth, which means I control the universe, and I say holding the doorknob is okay. Ah, can he do that? He has a stick of truth. He can do what he wants. Damn it! There's got to be another way into this room. For number seven... Report unusual behavior. Barricade your homes. Avoid all contact with infected individuals. Wait for official instructions. <laughs> Wait my ass. Kill all sons of bitches. That's my official instructions. This is some grim shit we got ourselves into. If you can tell, for number 7, I have Left 4 Dead 2. Originally, I had this game for the Xbox, but over Christmas of 2013, I lost that game. But, over Christmas 2013, luckily, Left 4 Dead 2 was available for free on Steam for a short period of time. And me being the computer geek that I am, I was on Steam at the time that it was on sale. I got it, and after playing it, I can honestly say that I do like the Steam version better than the Xbox version. Mostly because of the mods. This game, which is another game that is completely banned in Australia, like you can't even sell it, they didn't black out scenes, is notorious for being violent, bloody, and extremely graphic with melee weapons. There's nothing better than getting a chainsaw and ripping up those zombies head to toe. The best thing about the Steam version though, was the DLC. As in, there was no DLC. I was so happy when I first saw that. The only thing I hate about this game is those stupid witches. They always kill me. Flipping biscuits. Other than that though, this game gets my approval of sealed. Here's number six. Up next is Payday the Heist. Now, originally it was supposed to be an indie game, but then grew too big for its own self. Payday the Heist is a really, really good okay. game. Now, I don't know why I love this game so much, right. but all I know is that I do. The idea of working tactically together with my friends to rob a bank is really freaking awesome. I remember first time seeing this, I was thinking, wow. I could rob a bank in real life, but then I realized I live in the middle of nowhere and we don't have banks, so that plan flew out the window. Still, even with that, it's a really cool game. The only problem I would have to say I have with this game is that every time I try to record it, it lags so badly. I don't know what it is or why it does it. I've tried this different, I've tried different recording systems and I've tried changing settings on OBS, but it just does not want to record. And only on my stuff too. I've seen gameplay videos of it online. Trust me. Okay, we've got the key card. Let's get the drill. And the Number five. Rise and shine, Mr. Freeman. Rise and shine. Okay, I'm gonna be completely honest. The first time I played Half Life. I hated it. It could have been that the graphics weren't that good and it was 2013 when I first played the first Half-Life game, or it could have been that I had been sick for a week when I first started playing and just felt terrible. It's probably the first one. 
After playing Half-Life 2, I can easily say it's my favorite Valve game that I have ever played. The thought of an alien invasion where they don't kill us but instead have a military invasion? A military invasion? I don't know what it's called. Military camp thing. The mystery behind the game is really fascinating to me. Who is the G-Man? Why am I throwing this can at this guard? Why does this guard keep hitting me? Isn't that police brutality? Is that guard an alien? I don't know. Maybe. All I do know is that the first time I did play it, I started having a hard time liking it. But that's only because I'm an idiot and didn't know how to open a door. I seriously sat there for about five minutes trying to open a single door. Number four. Oh, The Binding of Isaac. This has to be one of the weirdest games I have ever played. And I've played Katamari Damacy, so that's saying something. With randomly generated maps and countless power-ups, The Binding of Isaac is the epitome of replay value. Again, I got this game while it was on sale, just like One Finger Death Punch, and that was after a friend had recommended it to me. I'm so happy I did. This game has kept me entertained for hours upon hours upon hours of traveling. Not only that, but I also watched the movie Indie Game The Movie, and after that, I was sold. The good news is, there's a sequel coming out this November, so if you do get tired of playing the game, you can just move on to the next one, which will have bigger dungeons, more power-ups, and even crazier plotline. Number 3. Oh, we're getting to the good stuff now. Not to say that the other games weren't good or other games that aren't on this list were good, but these next few games are really, really good. At least in my opinion. At number 3, I have Final Fantasy VII. Now, for my embarrassing confession of the day, I had never played Final Fantasy VII until it came out for the PC. I know, I'm terrible. With such a huge cultural relevance and millions of people still referring to the game this day, it's really crazy to think that it took me this long to finally play the game. I've had a PlayStation ever since it came out. Well, my dad had a PlayStation and he had this game, but I remember not playing it. I remember seeing it, but I never played it. And now that I have played the game, I get it. I get how awesome it is. I get why people love this game so much. This game is really, really... This game is really freaking amazing. The storytelling is phenomenal. And I really like the combat system that makes you always pay attention and never gives you a break while you're fighting an enemy. Compared to the only other Final Fantasy game that I have completed, which is the first one, US version, not Japan, this one has to be my favorite one in the series. And yes, I have played a lot of the other ones too, such as Final Fantasy 13, 2, 10, 10, 2. It's just that I haven't beat those yet. Whether it be I didn't like the games or I'm still in the middle of them playing them right now. The good thing is though, I recorded myself playing this one, Final Fantasy VII, on the PC. So you guys get to join with me on my commentary and get to see my reactions firsthand. Isn't that exciting?
Number two. At number two, we have, ironically enough, Shogun 2. Now, let me make it clear that I have always been a fan of strategy games. Ever since I played Rome on my uncle's PC, Total War that is, I've loved the Total War series. Shogun 2, being my most favorite just above a vampire, I think the reason for me liking it is... I think the reason for me liking it so much is because of the Japanese theme. Hence the title, Shogun. Is it the music? Yes. Is it the environment? Yes. Is it the everything? Yes. That, and the Total War games just have this certain feeling that no other game achieves. For me at least, each battle feels like it's the deciding factor on whether or not I will win the struggle of the war to become the Emperor of Japan. The only problem is, I'm not very good. But hey, at least I got an achievement. And coming in at number one... And for number one, we have Star Wars Empire at War. Now, I don't know what about this game that I like so much about it, but I love it. I remember watching the trailer for it on YouTube back in 2008 when I couldn't afford a computer and I didn't know what a Steam was. I would watch it over and over and over again thinking it was the best thing ever made. Now, I know that almost no one will agree with me about this, but I don't care. I got a computer and a Steam account for this one game only, and that's saying a lot. I have played a lot of games before, such as GameCube, PlayStation, Xbox, you, there's a whole list of things. I know I only list three, but there's a whole list of games I had played before, but this game, I went out and dedicated myself to get this single console, and yes, a computer is a console, just for this game. And when I got it, it was the best thing of my life. I had so much fun playing that game. And I know my brothers had so much fun playing it too. Not only is it Star Wars Universe, but having those battles and recreating the episodes in my mind was amazing to me. And it was something that I'll never forget. Having over 1500 hours already logged into the game and still playing it to this day. I know that this game is by far my favorite game that is on Steam as of 2014. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks for watching my top 10 video. Did you agree with my list? Probably not. People have different opinions. Well, let me know in the comment section below. And while you're at it, you want to see more videos that I've done? There's a button for that. It's called subscribe. And also, why don't you give this a share and like so that your friends can see my list. And we can share this list throughout the world.
Hey guys, uh, I don't know if you knew this, but I have other videos, so I got a bunch of Let's Plays going on right now. Why don't you, uh, check them out? I have them up right here, to the left. That's my The Binding of Isaac Let's Play. That was in my top ten. And then, to the right, that's my Final Fantasy Let's Play. Which was also in the top ten. How convenient. It's like I took my Let's Play footage and stuck it into the top ten. But I would never do that. Just kidding, I would do that, and that's what I did. I also have other Let's Plays. I'm currently playing Five Nights at Freddy's, which that was a thing for a while. Not really anymore, but you know, as always, I'm late to everything. And I also occasionally play FTL and some other games. So why don't you give this a check out on my channel. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later.